raining again. And diseases occur. And there's cracking and splitting of tomato fruits. And the fertilizer washes away. And it's unpleasant to work out in the rain. Let's make a shield to protect our crops from the rain. We'll call it a rain shelter. Here is a small commercial rain shelter which protected my hydroponic garden from the rain. Basically, a rain shelter is a structural frame covered with clear greenhouse grade polyethylene film. By the way, greenhouse grade polyethylene film typically lasts about three to four years because it has a UV inhibitor in it, whereas regular construction grade polyethylene plastic will break down after about six months. Rain shelters usually have some sort of irrigation system, but no heating or cooling devices and no electric power. In this video, we will be talking about unique home-built rain shelters, which will hopefully give you some ideas about how to build your own rain shelter. Well, I built my first rain shelter way back in 1971. I just poked some freshly cut bamboo sticks in the ground and tied polyethylene film on the frame. It was so simple and it did a great job of protecting my tomato plants from the rain. Thereafter, I was hooked on rain shelters. Shortly thereafter, Professor Ed Fukunaga and the Kona Experiment Station crew built a large bamboo rain shelter. Notice that the bamboo was supported by a well-braced post and top rail arrangement and there were wire braces for the outer bamboo members. A nearby grower, Masao Sunada, improved on this design and constructed these two exquisite bamboo structures. The first one is an arched design and the second employs a gable design but the bamboo members appear slightly arched. He grew some excellent tomatoes in these rain shelters. Polyethylene film clings tightly to an arched design but loosely flaps to a straight membered design. So a slight arch in the gable design caused the film to remain tight. In 1985, the AVRDC farm staff in Taiwan built these one row bamboo rain shelters over hilled soil beds for my tomato project. Notice the individual structures are two to three feet wide and there is about a two foot space between individual rain shelters. All the individual rain shelters are tied together for support by lateral bamboo members. In about 1974, I built a rain shelter with very flexible strawberry guava arches that were supported by a center post and top rail arrangement. Arches were wrapped with a polyethylene sleeve because the bark shriveled and hardened with time and this could damage the polyethylene cover. The bottoms of the arches were simply poked about six inches into the soil. A couple of years later, we built a similar structure with three quarter inch Schedule 40 PVC pipes. The structure was seven and a half feet tall and 14 feet wide. This required one and one third pipe lengths of PVC pipe. The horizontal edges of the polyethylene film were sandwiched between two one by three boards. Here is the same rain shelter, but the post and top rail support was replaced with a cable center support. And this made it easier to work in the structure. Well, what is the purpose of a center support? Well, rainwater can pond on the top and accumulate when the very flexible PVC pipes bend from this excessive weight and this can cause a collapse of the structure. Here is a similar structure at our Kona Agricultural Experiment Station, but this structure utilizes a three quarter inch galvanized pipe as a center support. There was a very unusual windstorm causing the pipe support to collapse and this once beautiful rain shelter was damaged. Notice how the 20 foot length of PVC pipe became unglued from the six and two third foot pipe length. Let's try to make a larger PVC rain shelter. Here, two inch PVC pipe was used to make a 12 foot high rain shelter, which was 30 foot wide by 96 feet long and had a cable center support. 
I have memories of standing about two feet away from the arches on a windy day, and the arches deflected so much from the wind, nearly hitting my shoulder. It seemed to be a great idea to use four-way PVC fittings to connect the two 20-foot lengths of PVC pipe and also form a center purlin. The connections failed because the opposing sockets are 180 degrees apart where the arched PVC pipes are at a lesser angle and under great tension. Someone once described enthusiasm as a time from when you get a great idea until you find out that it doesn't work. We designed the seedling rain shelter at AVRDC in 1985 to cope with typhoons in Taiwan. The main support pipes were filled with steel and concrete so as to withstand heavy winds while the upper unreinforced pipes would be damaged, and reconstruction would only involve rebuilding the top portion. A typhoon occurred after I left, and reports indicated that the concept had some merit. Grower Calvin Fukuhara designed and built this very functional, elevated, wooden-framed rain shelter with PVC arches to grow hydroponic lettuce. Experimental plantings are protected by this PVC rain shelter at the Volcano Agricultural Experiment Station. Iron rebar is driven into the soil at about an 85 degree angle, about six inches deep. The rebar is usually three to five feet long and the upper end is inserted into a PVC pipe forming a nice arched rain shelter. The tension of the PVC pipe and the knobs on the rebar keep the pipe from sliding downward. Now for something a little different. Captain Video to Crew, Captain Video to Crew, Spaceship Kratke has landed on Earth, Spaceship Kratke has landed on Earth. Now this is a unique rain shelter. A squirrel cage fan blows air between two sheets of polyethylene film whose edges are secured by the post and rail assembly. A plastic band limits the expansion of the balloon structure. One downside to this rain shelter, other than somebody wanting to fly it back to Mars, is that if electric power goes out during a rainstorm, the fan will stop and air will deflate, causing water to collect in what is then a tank and eventually collapse the rain shelter. Gail and Myhera designed and built this EMT rain shelter at the Volcano Agricultural Experiment Station. EMT refers to electrical metallic tubing, which is lightweight and easy to bend. This rain shelter has an unobstructed width of 16 feet. EMT typically comes in 10 foot lengths. Two lengths can be joined together with one and three eighths inch chain link fence top rail pipe which is also stronger than EMT. To fabricate one half of an arch, a straight section of EMT was driven into the soil and connected to a properly bent 10 foot length of EMT with a short section of top rail. The upper end of the bent 10 foot EMT is then inserted into a short section of top rail pipe, which was correctly bent to form the center peak of the structure. Here, a somewhat similar EMT rain shelter became a cheap tractor shed. I built this EMT rain shelter, but then stored my things in it and left my plants outside. A modified canopy tent was covered with polyethylene and became a very functional rain shelter. Straight sections of EMT were inserted into corner and peak fittings. The structure has straight sides which may be covered with insect screen or shade cloth. It's difficult to maintain the tightness of the polyethylene film over straight rafters, so ponding of rainwater can occur on a gable roof that is not tight enough. This is much less of a problem with arched designs. You may have noticed a polyethylene film attachment device on this rain shelter and some of the other rain shelters previously. Polyethylene film can be quickly and securely fastened with a spring lock channel, which we like to call wiggle wire. Film is placed over the channel and held tightly while working the spring back and forth to position the peaks and valleys of the spring 
into the channel, thus securing the film. Glenn Sacco built this rain shelter to protect a four foot by eight foot tank of hydroponic lettuce. The sides and ends are covered with a light mesh shade screen. All working operations can be done from outside the structure so no aisle space is needed. Also, a small size rain shelter doesn't get as hot as a larger structure. The small rain shelter size provides the grower with a simple insect and disease control measure which consists of fallowing the tank for a week after harvesting. Here is a gable design rain shelter which protected experiments for many years at the old Beaumont Agricultural Experiment Station headquarters. A laminated arch design rain shelter protected this tomato experiment. It was a very good looking structure too. One row of tomatoes was protected with this simple rain shelter. A close-up reveals tape and wires for attachment and strapping over the top to prevent flapping. Ponding could occur near the sagging edges, so we abandoned the concept. We grew onions outside, but wanted to protect them from rain during the two months before harvest to prevent spoilage. Wooden frames supported clear fiberglass roofing panels. These could be quickly and easily installed or dismantled. A heavy-duty military surplus clear plexiglass device was repurposed to become a rain shelter for seedlings and other plants. It was very durable. Well, I don't have architectural plans for these rain shelters, but I hope they will give you ideas on how to build your own rain shelter. I would appreciate seeing comments about which was your favorite rain shelter design. And it might be fun to return to this video in a year or so and read what other folks have selected as their favorite. Well, it's raining again, and my advice is to build a rain shelter and stay dry. Aloha! Mm -hmm.